Welcome to Aiken This Week. I'm Glenn Parker and I'll be the host for today's show. Our guest today is our new city manager, John Clem. John, welcome to Aiken. Thank you. You've been on the job for about a month now, so you're getting acclimated, you're learning a little bit about Aiken. What we want to do today is just find out a little bit about you personally okay. and then talk about your professional background and your vision for Aiken, I guess. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been uh, involved in the, in the public sector for over 30 years. Uh, both my wife and I were born and raised in Massachusetts, and I've, I've spent the, entire, the entirety of my career uh, working uh, for a local and state government in both Massachusetts uh, and Rhode Island. I, I was a, a youngster who um, enjoyed uh, going to town meetings and the like, even when I was in high school or whatever. Uh, and I actually was the uh, youngest selectman to ever run and win uh, and hold the position. A selectman and is, is similar to a mayor uh, in, in New England. Uh, and uh, I did that for six years. Uh, uh, but I always knew, uh, you know, it goes back to uh, uh, being five years old and being lifted onto my father's shoulders uh, at St. Francis Xavier Church in Hyannis, Massachusetts mm -hmm. to watch uh, President Kennedy and Jackie come out of our, our local church. Uh, mm -hmm. I was indoctrinated into politics and, and public service at a, at a very uh, young age. And, and we're of an age where uh, actually the, the, con the, the, the thought of going into public service was actually a noble and, a, and an honorable thing sure. to do. Uh, um, unfortunately, that has changed us somewhat um, <laughs> over, over the years. Uh, but I went, went to school, I went to Boston College and got a, a, a bachelor's degree in, in uh, uh, politics and economics. Uh, and then I got a master's degree from uh, Bridgewater State University uh, and, um, in, in public administration. Um, I, um, I've worked at the local level, as I said, as a selectman in the town of Barnstable. And then I went on to, to um, serve as a regional director of a housing agency in Massachusetts. And I did that for four years. Uh, and then I ran for the state legislature and served as a, as a legislator uh, for eight years uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, and then I came home again and, and uh, became a uh, city manager and have done that for over 15 years in both Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Good, good. So you're moving your family down here soon. I understand yes. you're bringing a couple of cats with you. Is we that do. We have a uh, large <laughs> family of a 100-pound of a German Shepherd and five cats. Wow. And so, uh, there's plenty of activity uh, every day in our household, but uh, my wife and I are animal lovers, and I suspect very shortly she'll be volunteering at either the county uh, operation or at the SBCA, mm -hmm. and that's what she loves to do. Mm -hmm. And you told me the other day that you want to work on your golf game. It's uh, a little rusty, shall we say, uh, right that, now. That's the understatement of the year. <laughs> I actually am the worst type of golfer there is. Uh, people say, well, how long have you, have you been golfing? And I say, well, over 40 years, and so they say, well, you must be pretty good. Actually, that's once or twice a year for 40 years. <laughs> exactly. So I never really learned how to play. And out of frustration, I stopped about four or five years ago with the expressed desire at some point to actually take it up again and play enough. As you probably know, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a sport that you can't just play now and then. You, you have to kind of commit yourself uh, to really fully enjoy the experience. And so I hope I'm going to be able to do that. I'm not expecting that there's going to be a lot of free time in, in this new job as city manager. <laughs> uh, but if there are uh, some f uh, fleeing moments uh, from time to time, I'd like to get back out on the golf course and and take it up again much more seriously. Well, one of the, the beauties of Aiken and South Carolina as a whole is you've got just hundreds of options to Absolutely. pick from around here to, get, to improve your game. I'm looking forward to it. I know you've been on a lot of tours yep. recently. You're trying to get out. Tell us what you've seen and what you've been impressed with as you've made some of the tours around town. Well, even before I started uh, officially uh, in this job, uh, Roger LaDuke ha has been terrific and, and uh, spending a lot of time uh, bringing me around the city or whatever. I still have a lot to learn, obviously. I've only been here for four weeks. Uh, but I just continue to be impressed each and every day at the, the sheer beauty and, and unique charm uh, that uh, really brought uh, Dolores and I here. We've spent, I, I've spent 59 of my 59 years living within an eighth of a mile of the ocean. Uh -huh. So uh, if I go back <laughs> about a year, I probably would have suggested that the possibility that I would go inland anywhere <laughs> uh, probably wasn't in the cards. Uh, I applied for other jobs. I was a finalist in five communities, and all of them, other than Aiken, uh, were coastal communities. Mm -hmm. uh, and so 
Um, I, I wasn't fully serious about uh, Aiken as an option until uh, Dolores and I uh, spent a weekend here, uh, and I was really taken uh, by so much. Uh, and as I learned more and more about this city, I, I just hope that all of the residents and citizens of Aiken are uh, truly understanding how, how blessed they are uh, to live in such a wonderful community. Yeah. So there was, while we don't have a coastline here, there was something about Aiken that brought you here, huh? Really, it, it, it was a combination. For, uh, I can remember the first day that we, we came to, to uh, Aiken, I was struck by the, the sheer beauty of the tree line of the trees mm. uh, in, in Aiken. Uh, obviously, the open spaces and the recreational facilities that we've built for our citizens. Quality of life is obviously a major issue here in Aiken, mm -hmm. and that's very, very attractive. The open spaces, Hitchcock Woods and so many of the other uh, conservation areas and open spaces that have been acquired for, for future generations to enjoy in perpetuity, uh, says a lot about the values uh, of a community, and I, uh, although I haven't certainly met uh, uh, most of them, I applaud uh, the accomplishments of past leaders uh, in the city who had the foresight to make some really good and sound uh, decisions. Uh, we have a downtown that really is incredible. Um, I hear from time to time people complaining, for example, about the parking problem mm. uh, downtown, and. And uh, the good part about that is, is it's, it's solvable. I mean, we can come up with uh, strategies to deal with that. Uh, but I tell, uh, I tell many uh, when, when that issue comes up uh, that we should, we should understand that we're fortunate to have a problem like <laughs> that because there are thousands of city managers across this country that have a very different problem. Yeah. And their problem is no one wants to go down. They'd love to have so, our problem. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, and so we're blessed with institutions of higher learning mm -hmm. uh, that are wonderful, uh, great medical facilities, a great downtown, great open spaces and recreation. It really is a nice community. And, and uh, I hope uh, as city manager that I'm able through the experience that I've had uh, in other communities to uh, bring our city to the next level. Good. What have you not seen yet? You've heard about it, but you hadn't had the chance to get around. You're looking forward to it. Well, there are sections of the city that I still haven't. Uh, I literally want to walk as much as possible and, and drive around uh, every neighborhood in, in the uh, city, and I just haven't had a time to do that. Uh, unfortunately, in a way, when you, when you accept the job and you begin here, it's like the train that's that's uh, moving. Uh, you, it doesn't stop for you to take a month or two to, to mm -hmm. get acclimated or whatever. Every day there's an expectation that we move forward. Uh, and so I have to, I've spent a lot of time in the evenings and on weekends or whatever with Dolores uh, exploring. <clears throat> and I'll continue to do that. And, okay. and uh, our staff, Roger uh, and our staff have been terrific in terms of trying to bring me up to, to, to speed. Uh, in a lot of these areas. Still on the uphill side of the learning curve right now. Oh yeah, now. it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I was born and raised 1,700 miles from here, so it's gonna mm -hmm. take some time to, to become acclimated. Sure. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, after having been here for four weeks, I am just so excited about not only what exists, but what potentials uh, are out there in so many areas. Good. Well, you're our eighth city manager yeah. for the city of Aiken. I know you and council have sat down and worked on some goals and some visionary yeah. things. Tell us a little bit about what they've tasked you with for your maybe your personal goals and then what they looked at for goals for the city and the vision for this city. This council has been very clear in terms of what their ex expectations are uh, and very clear about their own uh, goals. I suspect that with the new council coming on after November that we'll have a more formalized strategic planning process, mm -hmm. uh, which cities usually do uh, uh, every now and then. Um, but clearly, uh, first and foremost, uh, this council understands its fiduciary responsibility. And uh, I, th I believe that it was their desire to really take a close look at our organization. We have great staff, great department heads, great staff, uh, and, and very impressive uh, services that are provided. Uh, but every uh, operation, whether it's public sector or private sector, can always, uh, always has, there's always room for improvement. Uh, and I think it is their desire uh, in bringing someone in from the outside to really take a close look at the operation and to see whether there are efficiencies uh, or reorganizations that can 
uh, take place. Uh, there's an understanding that our citizens are taxed, and I know that our council takes uh, decisions like raising taxes very, very seriously, mm -hmm. as they should, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that uh, obviously uh, is f foremost in my mind. And so I'm taking a very close look at every aspect of our operation, and unfortunately uh, for me, I, I came in right you know, halfway through the budgetary right. process. So Roger LaDuke really prepared the budget, and, and this really is not my budget. My first budget will be presented uh, next year. Mm -hmm. But that'll give me sufficient time to really look at the operations to see if, if there are uh, w areas where we can uh, save some money and, and uh, make our operation uh, more efficient. So that whole uh, finance area I know is an important area mm -hmm. uh, for our, our city council. Uh, there is a recognition that we're a little late in redrafting or rewriting our comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'll be working with Tommy Paradise, with our planning commission, uh, with other uh, staff, uh, with all of our various committees, with our city council and our citizens uh, in going through that whole process. I have, I have tried as much as possible to listen as opposed to speak uh, in my first uh, four uh, weeks here. Uh, and I've asked our citizens what their vision is uh, for Aiken over the next five or ten years. And I'm getting, uh, I'm getting mixed messages. In, in some instances, I'm not getting a message at all. So I suspect mm -hmm. that there is a need to, you know, to really sit down and roll up our sleeves and ask the tough questions about where we want to go. I mean, you have to, to be successful getting somewhere, you have to know where it is you want to you yes. uh, go. And, 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 uh, I think that, in a way, the city is is at a at, at a at a turning point in terms of of uh, having several options to 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 make uh, to determine uh, what it is will be in in five or ten or twenty years uh, mm -hmm. from now. And so, mm -hmm. I really am excited about coming in at the beginning of that process uh, because I think the decisions uh, that we make uh, or the decisions we we defer. Uh, will play a, a major role in deciding uh, what type of community this is going to be. And uh, as, as someone who has just gotten here, I, I have to tell you that so far my conclusion is uh, we're a great community. This is a great city. There are areas of improvement uh, that need to be made. Uh, we need to become more efficient, uh, more effective. Uh, we need to make tough decisions. Uh, about things like infrastructure and how mm -hmm. we're going to uh, fund uh, those needs in the past, in, mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, but I'll tell you, I can list a whole lot of communities that aren't as fortunate as us in Aiken uh, in terms of where we stand uh, today. Right. The concept, I think, of public safety was a little bit new to you as far as managing a public safety department. I know you started meeting with uh, Chief Barranco yes. and some of his staff. What's your initial thoughts on, on public safety and how do you see that filtering out over time? Well, you have to realize that I that uh, my entirety of my professional career has been in New England, mm -hmm. heavily unionized, uh, where the fire department was the fire department and the police department was the police department, uh, and they never met. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, and so I was fascinated with 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 what we have here because it's uh, other than hearing about the possibility of a public safety department, uh, I knew that that uh, smaller communities around the country, uh, really small communities, uh, might have a public safety department. But I've never seen an operation this size uh, with one. So I'm fascinated with with the you know just just the concept of. of uh, uh, a consolidated uh, public safety department. Mm -hmm. But I have had an opportunity, it was a great honor for me uh, last week to attend the annual awards uh, banquet uh, of our uh, public safety department. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed with the accomplishments with the men and women that are out there each and every day uh, protecting uh, the safety of our, of our citizens. We're really, really blessed with good leadership at the uh, Public Safety Department uh, and with extraordinary uh, employees that are literally risking their lives uh, uh, to keep all of, our, uh, uh, all of us safe. And so I, I, I think that, that we're blessed with the quality of, of employees and, and uh, with the program that, uh, that we have. But I still am fascinated with, it, with the concept <laughs> of a consolidated department. Well, I think you're going to find not only are they in the, in the 
police cars and in the fire trucks, but they're also in the neighborhoods and they're sure. playing ball with the kids Absolutely. and they're at the rec centers yeah. at the swimming pools. And it is public safety as a whole yeah. community and, and we really embrace that. And I was really impressed with the close working relationship between the city and the county mm -hmm. and the sheriff. I had the, the great pleasure of meeting our, our sheriff uh, mm -hmm. the other day. Uh, and I think that the citizens are truly blessed, uh, not only that we have a terrific county uh, in a great city, but that the collaboration and the communications uh, are there. Uh, I think our chief and, and sheriff probably talk every day. Yeah. Uh, and it's that type of coordination that I think leads to the type of, of uh, high quality service that we uh, that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, our sheriff's a, a former city employee. Yes. Didn't know if you knew that. Yes. I, I do. I've seen a lot of city employees becoming county employees mm -hmm. and county employees coming <laughs> to the city and then back and forth or whatever. So I'm kind of uh, intrigued by that. Uh, county government has never been really strong in, in New England. So mm -hmm. that's another aspect of this job that uh, I'm intrigued by. Uh, mm -hmm. Every square inch of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Uh, are incorporated, so we don't have any unincorporated areas. So annexation and the and the and the the the, the reality that some of our area is county and some city uh, doesn't exist uh, yeah. where I come from. So I'm really intrigued by all of this. Yeah, I believe I noticed that even the schools were up under your jurisdiction yes. in Portsmouth. Yeah, this is the first time in my entire career that the school operation was not a division or a department of mm. city government. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, that is rather interesting. I have in the past been very involved with the, with the uh, operations of, of the school department. Uh, in a way, that's a good thing because it allows me to focus on other uh, right. on city issues. Uh, right. one, one good thing is, is that when the schools are a department of city government, there's tremendous strain for the scarce dollar. Mm -hmm. So you'd have the police department in competition, you know, do, you, do we need another police officer or another teacher in the classroom? And so uh, that type of friction isn't as obvious here, and I think that's a, that's right. a good thing. Uh, but it is a little uh, odd not, not to have the school operations uh, as part of our <laughs> overall operation. Let's talk a little bit about the, the physical location of where the city's going to end up downtown. Yeah. Right now we're housed in a couple of buildings. There's the building on Lawrence Street that houses your office, the finance department. Uh, then there's the building on Park where the, the planning department, sure. IT, building inspections. A couple of three years ago there was discussion of taking the building on Park, extending it over toward Newberry Street. I don't know if you've had time to look into that or not, but tell us a little bit about what you see yeah, going on there. I, I have. I've had an awful lot, a lot of uh, opportunity to, to speak to employees, for example, about uh, that whole operation. Coming from the outside, I, I, I thought it rather odd that, that there wasn't a traditional city hall where, mm -hmm. I mean, you usually have public works and, and police and fire in a separate location, but cities usually have a city hall where most of the operations are working under, under one roof. Uh, we, as you said, we've literally got three buildings now, and I know it's a sensitive issue because there's been a lot of discussion before I got here about sure. uh, wh where certain departments uh, would be, but I think it is very, very important for, for management and the council to continue to have this conversation. I mean, on, on the upside, we have three uh, parcels that are all valuable, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not one that believes that we need three buildings. And and uh, uh, at the end of the day, I'm reminded that what's important is convenience to our customers, Correct. who happen to be yes. our taxpayers and citizens. So if we have an operation where someone goes to the municipal building and waits five or ten minutes and then finds out that they were supposed to be in over in Lawrence Street or whatever, that's that's not serving us well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I will continue to listen to to staff and to citizens and to talk to the council about this. But I think that we're not to closure yet in terms of of that whole issue. And and as I said, as long as we ultimately are in agreement that what should be driving the bus uh, is the, the convenience uh, to our residents and taxpayers, mm -hmm. I think ultimately we'll make the right decision. Okay. Uh, you recently filled a, one of your vacant department heads yep. at the start of the fiscal year, Jessica Campbell, yes. will be the officially the new Parks, Recreation and Tourism Director. You mentioned, too, I know you're very familiar with tourism yes. being from the Northeast. Yes. 
but you hadn't seen parks, recreation, and tourism under one heading before. Right. I, I've never seen that. Never seen that. Uh, and and um, I come from from uh, not only New England. I come from Cape Cod, which is a huge tourist uh, area. Almost to a fault, our local economy has been driven by tourism mm -hmm. for decades. It's the home of my hometown. Is the home of the Kennedy Compound. So you can imagine the 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 the, uh, the reality that it's a tourist uh, mecca. Mm -hmm. It's also they've got beautiful beaches and and uh, for for all. It's really an international uh, location for, for tourism. And so I was rather surprised when I came here. It was very obvious that, that we have visitors as well. Uh, and I was surprised that our tourism operation wasn't more in, involved with our economic development operation. But we really don't have an economic development right. operation. That's supposed to change with the That's adoption right. of the hospitality tax and the, 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 the hiring of, of uh, staff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'll talk to the council about uh, that those whole issues. I mean, I don't know how realistic it is at the end of the day to have uh, to find someone who's both a, a uh, an expert in in parks, uh, in recreation, uh, and in business development and tourism. Mm -hmm. And so we'll we'll have to take a look at that and and uh, see uh, what makes sense. Okay. Uh, I look forward to talking to the council about that. But in terms of, of uh, the new uh, the new director, yes. uh, who will be starting uh, uh, very shortly, I was very um, uh, very impressed uh, in my interviews uh, with uh, Ms. Campbell. Uh, I think that uh, she clearly has the education uh, and now the experience. She's worked for us for over a decade, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was nominated uh, as uh, Young Professional of the Year in South Carolina, as you know, mm -hmm. in the area of park uh, and recreation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, sh and she brings a, a, a combination of uh, education and experience uh, and a high level of uh, enthusiasm and excitement about the, the possibility of taking over the department. Uh, and I think that at this time that will serve uh, this city well. Uh, and of course, she she uh, has a, a wonderful uh, staff in place over there uh, uh, already. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, as you know, we're we're not mm -hmm. only in a holding patent in Park and Rec, uh, we're we're clearly talking about uh, expansion. Sure. Uh, our senior center, our North Side Recreational. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's important that we have strong leadership in that uh, department over the next uh, five or ten years. Uh, and I think that she uh, will bring uh, that to us. Uh, and I look forward to working with, with her and, and other uh, supervisors over there in the department. Good, good. Uh, last week, the Chamber released their Regional Economic Benchmarking Report yeah. for Aiken County. And in there, it stated that population growth in, in Aiken, North Augusta, the city of Aiken, has slowed, but it still remained above or at the national average. What yeah. it did show is that in South Carolina, and especially in Aiken, a lot more aging people are moving here. So how will you use that information in this report as you look at, obviously not this year's budget, but the future budgets and maybe that strategic plan? Yeah. How do you incorporate that, in, incorporate that into your vision? Well, it's very, very helpful and good information. And I should have uh, mentioned uh, uh, before that when we talk about the, the assets that we have in this community, we have a very active uh, Chamber of Commerce and Business mm -hmm. community. Uh, and I say that not only because it's obvious being here, but in comparison uh, to other areas uh, that I've been, I think we're blessed with a really active and, and hardworking and dedicated uh, Chamber of Commerce and business community. And this is a perfect example. You know, they're not only getting information for their needs, they're getting information that is extraordinarily helpful for the entire community. And as I mentioned before, We'll be beginning a strategic planning process and a comprehensive planning process and a visioning process in the city. And those are the, that, that's the, the, the type of data set, the type of information, the metrics that we need mm -hmm. so that we're making an uh, informed decision. Uh, a lot of the information, uh, obviously, uh, it will be difficult for us to move the needle on, you know, the attainment sure. of education. Uh, there isn't a one that you can wave. Uh, to to uh, there are no simple uh, answers mm -hmm. uh, in some of that, but uh, I really applaud the uh, the chamber uh, for spending the time and effort to get to get that base information, and I know it will be critical uh, to us uh, when we go through the planning process. Okay, 
I guess as we sort of wrap up today, this, this show is something you've done in Portsmouth during your time up there, and you sort of have a vision for this show. It's going to be called Aiken This Week. Yeah. So tell us what your vision is for this show and maybe what we can expect, some of the folks we can expect to see on the show. Okay, what I've found in both Massachusetts and R Rhode Island now in South Carolina is that the relationship between citizens and their government has changed. And at the, at the federal and at the state level, that isn't necessarily a good thing in terms of how it's changed. Uh, but I think the greatest promise for a, a meaningful connection uh, with citizens and government is at the local level. And, uh, but what I found is because of people's lives changing, the lifestyles changing, people don't have the time anymore to go to a two or three hour planning <laughs> meeting a couple times a, a, a month or a council <clears throat> meeting, whatever the case may be. And so the provision of information from government to them and then vice versa, getting information back from our citizens is incredibly important. Our, Local newspaper does a great job, the Aiken Standard, mm -hmm. and we're blessed to have it uh, in other publications. I know that there's a Aiken Leader and the like that provide information on a regular basis, which is a really good thing. But they're limited by column inches, uh, and, and they, they do a wonderful job at explaining what we did, uh, but they, there just isn't enough t space at times to fully explain the whys. And what I find in going out talking to the citizens and taxpayers of the city is uh, they, they aren't necessarily commenting on what decision was made. They're asking for the, for the justification for it. And so I, I, I found uh, in my previous experience uh, is that programs like this, having department heads on, senior managers on, committee chairs on, mm -hmm. uh, explaining through you through our, our the, the the wonder of TV to our citizens, the why you know sure. answering the question of why why they're looking at an issue, why they've decided on a certain issue, or explaining uh, that decision making uh, decision making is pending, and soliciting input uh, from our citizens is very very important. So this is just one tool that we have available to us, mm -hmm. and I think uh, that we we haven't used it to the maximum capacity. I would like to talk to the council about having other committees uh, on, the, on the air. You know, our design review committee and our planning commission and our uh, zoning board are making very uh, important decisions uh, for, for the future of this community. And to, to uh, have the, those, those committees and those forums uh, on the air, I think just provides more information to our citizens, and right. that really is what this is all about. And for those that want to watch the show, it'll be on our website, which I think yes. the website's revamping. It'll be yes. coming out with a new website shortly, but folks can click on the link. We'll archive the shows. It'll take them to a YouTube channel where they can see that. I believe we're also going to be showing them on Channel 4, yes. the city's channel. And, and one thing I would mention, if anyone has a question, you can email us at AikenThisWeek at CityOfAikenSC.gov. Maybe you've got a topic that you're interested in, and, and maybe we can get that on the air for you in the future. John, as we're wrapping up here today, is there anything you want to, anything we missed, anything you want to share? No, I just want to say that both Dolores and I think that we've been incredibly blessed uh, to have this opportunity, and I'm passionate about, uh, about uh, doing a, a good job for the citizens and taxpayers. I know who it is that pays my paycheck every week, <laughs> and I'll do everything that I can in bringing 30 years of experience to do the best job uh, so that we're delivering services that people can be really proud of. Great. Again, welcome to Aiken. And thank you. Thank you for coming today. My pleasure. Thank you.